please take note of all the opportunities in your announcement sheet. Now let's hear more about how all of you have made a difference in the world through your Faith Promise Pledge. Because of your extraordinary giving, we are able to support various endeavors impacting the community, country, and nations of the world. Through our missionaries in the Middle East, North Africa, Russia, Africa, and Southeast Asia, we are positioned to reach at least 200 unreached people groups. The Africa Forum countries we partner with include the DRC, Angola, Namibia, Mozambique, Cameroon and Swaziland. TV that has a viewership of 550,000 per episode. It has been a fruitful year and we are looking forward to the new territory God has for us. Thank you for giving to Faith Promise. A lot was said in that short presentation, and I would like to, a little bit later on in the service, highlight to you again some of those things that's been said. At this point in time, we'd like to hand out to every one of you a beautiful magazine that has got chronicled in it the things that happened through Faith Promise, through your participation, your involvement, and your giving. And so please receive with great gratitude from us, a very lovely uh, publication that tells you more about Faith Promise. Please note there's a pledge card in the middle and a pen. Um, you're not required to do anything with it right now, but later on in the service, I will take you through that. But enjoy this magazine. May it build your faith and encourage you to make a difference. It's a celebration of what has been accomplished through the people of God, to really, really make a difference in this world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I encourage you to read it, put it next to your bedside, put it on your coffee table. It's so colorful and so beautifully done. I think it can take a place of honor on your coffee table. And let others read it as well and see that God is truly alive and He's doing incredible things. Just going to give a moment that folks can all receive that as they do that, I would like to just ask you, because it's a special Sunday for us at this church family, um, a lot needs to be said and done. Uh, we ask for your patience if we maybe go over five or at a maximum ten minutes in our time. It's once in a year where we ask you specifically for that. It is also a privilege to welcome missionaries into our meeting that's working uh, together and that we've had the privilege in partnering with over years to make a difference far and wide in the nations of the world. Also, our Africa partners, uh, you've seen the countries that they represent. They have been with us for the last week, and we appreciate our working together so much. But I also want to actually say to all of you as territory takers, difference makers, um, those that actually keep things going here at the home base, a special word of thanks that you've contributed so faithfully 
to Faith Promise, have given of your time and your skill. We really, really appreciate you, and we bless God for you. Let me just say to you, to make a difference in this world takes partnering, a working together. And today, even as we consider the bigger picture of the nations of the world, one cannot imagine that actually anybody can make any difference all by themselves. But together, we are doing something actually very special for God. And I wanted to honor you for that. Let me check how far the distribution has gone. If you've not received the magazine yet, raise your hand high that they can see where you are and focus on that group. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate the young people that's helped us to distribute. I trust that this magazine will really serve a wonderful purpose in encouraging you in your giving and living for God. I think we've gotten it done. Is there anybody last round that didn't get a magazine? Raise your hands high. Just keep them up, please. We seem to be needing people in that block on the gallery up there. Please, if we can rush over there. Anybody downstairs that hasn't received it? Well done. I think we got everybody. Please keep your hands up. Guys are rushing over there to give you magazines in the top, the gallery. And if you really missed out somehow, I believe we can have a few copies left over at the end for you to pick up at the information desk afterwards. Well, we're going to do things slightly different this morning. Uh, we're going to go into our sermon. And I would like to, at this point, give a special welcome to all viewers and those that participate and share with us through social media, television, radio. It's great to have you with us in some other way and form, and we trust you'll be blessed as we share together. Let's pray and ask that the Holy Spirit will feed our hearts and souls and speak to us from His Word. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You for Your Word. And I pray, Lord, that Your Word will be made alive in our hearts today. Pray that You will help me to speak simply what You want spoken. And Lord, for the grace upon us to not only be hearers of Your Word, but actually to be doers. In Jesus' name, amen. Our previous sermon is a follow-through of what we previously felt the Lord said to us. And what He said to us was a specific assignment. And we called it, Take New Territory. And we looked at taking new territory from all angles, but it was as if we stepped into an era and a time now where God says, now I want you to do it. And I want you to be the difference. And so our theme at this current time is be the difference. And we would like to look at different areas of life and society where we are called by God to be the difference and make a difference. And the focus this morning falls on be the difference in the nations. So my topic this morning is be the difference in the nations. I want to say to you that God has a special interest in the nations of the world. And He claims them as His own. That's a very important statement that I'm making. I want you to know that God loves the nations of this world. I know all of us are patriotic. Finally, we all stand for some other nation and we fly the flag. But God's got a heart for all the nations and He loves the nations and the peoples of this world and He wants to bless them. He wants to bless them. God is for the nations of the world. And His desire is that all the nations will gather 
in front of his throne one day to worship him and acknowledge him as Lord and God. And in order to see that happen, I believe that it's clear from Scripture that God rolled out a plan, a grand plan, which I would like to share in simple terms with you today, to do something that I call nation infiltration. You got that? Got a nice ring to it, hasn't it? Nation infiltration. And so nation infiltration with the good news about Jesus Christ is not with some other news. Nation infiltration with the good news about Jesus Christ is part of God's strategy, actually, in this world to make for His kingdom to come. Meaning that all people will know about Jesus and will come under His Lordship and His kingdom to be established in this world. That's what God wants. And He's calling you and me to be part of His nation infiltration achievement and program. And in a sense, that's what faith promise is all about. That's what it's about. More about that later. But firstly, I would like to take a few moments and stand still to speak about God's claim to the nations. If you stake a claim to something, you better know that you have the right to do so. So does God have a right to claim the nations of this world as His inheritance? And I believe that God lays claims to all people and all nations simply by the fact that He created mankind and by implication, the nations. And it's backed up by many various scriptures. I think it follows a principle in life that goes like this. If you design something and you make it, you own it. You have the right to patent it and sell it, but you own it. If you designed it and made it, you own it. Well, God designed and made the nations of this world, all of mankind, and ultimately, they belong to Him. And He lays claim to that. All nations are His inheritance. And I would like to encourage you today, just as a child of God or a believer, that you will allow the Holy Spirit to broaden your perspective of this world and of life. It's amazing to me, although we live in what they call these days a global village, and you can speak to anyone anywhere, and you can go anywhere in the world relatively easily, but you still find people who live life by peeping through the keyhole. And all they see is their little world, and it's all that matters. And I would like to ask you today, if you want to be a difference maker and a territory taker, then you need to allow God to take you beyond the keyhole of your world. And you have to see that His heart is for the nations of the world. You have to. So I pray right now, open eye prayer, for a grace of God upon your life to expand your vision and your heart so that God can express His heart for the nations through you. And all you need to do is with a real honesty say, Amen. Even if it's just like a little, Amen. Amen. God will hear it and He will do it for you. I am saying that no true-blooded Christian can be small-minded. No real disciple of Jesus can say, I don't care about the world. I just, it's me and my people and my family and my mission. We're okay here. We just, we just keep it here. No, 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 no. God's heart is for the world, for the nations of this world. And it's very important that you understand at this time, territory taking Making a difference is about catching God's heart for this world. His claim to the nations is confirmed so beautifully in Psalm 82 and verse 8. I read from the NIV. It just says, Rise up, our God, judge the, nation, the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. That's the conclusion of the scripture and the psalmist. All the nations are your inheritance. Folks, if we look back at the history of this world, we see from the earliest interactions between God and Abraham, the father of faith. Do you remember? They didn't have a Bible. They didn't know much about God. And suddenly God bursts onto the scene of history, and He begins to speak to Abraham. And He, he, he starts in a lovely way. He says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. That's the part all of us like. Isn't that true? 
We want to be blessed. Bless me. Bless me. Bless God. God bless me. And that's good. God starts that way. And He starts that way still with you today. He says, I will bless you. I want to bless you. God does not start off by saying, I'm going to kill you. He doesn't start off by saying, you're bad. I'm going to you know, take you out. He starts off by, I want to bless you. But then he goes on right back in history with Abraham. And guess what's the next thing that he brings into focus? He says to Abraham, and through you, I want to bless all the nations of the world. Isn't that amazing? So right there, right in the beginning, we see that God has got a focus on the nations and that his intent was revealed that he wants to bless the nations of the world. Now, before we run away with all the excitement about blessing, it's not just about blessing so that you can say, oh, this is nice, you know. It's a very special blessing that God was referring to. The blessing referred to was the coming of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Because the world had fallen by that time already in sin, in hopelessness, far away from God, doing their own thing. And God knew that unless He sent the blessing of His Son as a Savior, millions and millions will continue to pour into hell an eternity separate from God in agony. That's reality. And so God comes and He says, Abraham, you're my man. And I do believe with all of my heart this is not just good preaching. It's actually the truth that God stands in front of every believer today and He says, you're my man. You're my woman. And through you, I want to bless the nations of this world. So don't miss your calling. Don't miss your God appointment. It's crucial that you will follow through as Abraham did. And the major thing we are called to do is to keep on presenting Jesus Christ as the hope of this world by the forgiveness and the reconciliation He offers to all people from all nations. Now it's in this context that the Father mandated the Son, Jesus Christ, to realize His claim to the nations. The nations went on their own journey away from God and in sending Jesus and giving him a mandate, God called the nations back to himself. And so I want to move. My second point, my first point was God the Father claims the nations. But God's Son, it was his mission to actually open the door for the nations to come back to God. And so my second point is the Son's mission to the nations. Well, in his death and resurrection... Jesus reached out to all mankind with love and forgiveness. Folks, these are, it's easy to say, but they carry deep meaning. Through His coming to earth, Jesus came as the one who paid the price for the sin of all mankind, all the nations of the world. And He was raised from the dead and He continues to intercede for all people. And it's important that we understand that people from all nations, tribes, and tongues are invited through the Son and His death and resurrection to share in the life and forgiveness that He offers, that they may be reconciled with God. That's the gospel message. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. In the following text that will appear for you, we see that the Father is actually encouraging Jesus to extend His rulership over the nations. And in Psalm 2 verse 8, which is also on your announcement sheets and will appear on the screens now, it says the following. The Father speaks to the Son in terms of His mission here on earth. And He says, ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. What an incredible encouragement. And I want you to know that as Jesus came to earth and died on the cross, he didn't just, it wasn't just an event. It was an, an, an opening of a door to bring all nations and all tribes back to be reconciled with God through forgiveness. I want to take you to one other scripture. And it's really a scripture that portrays God's final prophetic forecast for all nations. That they will come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. In other words, acknowledging Christ 
as Lord and Savior. And it's to that end that we work, that we labor with God, that you are called to participate as a believer. Now I'm referring to Revelation 11 verse 15. It's at the end of the book, the Bible. It says this is the, one of the final pictures. And it says in Revelation 11 15, the kingdoms of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and His Messiah, and He will reign forever and ever. God's going to do this thing. He's going to reach the nations and bring to fulfillment what the Apostle Paul also saw and wrote to the Philippians in Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11. And it's like this. It goes like this. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, talking about Jesus. He raised him from the dead, and he's now seated on the right hand of God. And it says it gave him the name that is above every name. That's why I get so upset when some, I, I'm you know, tempted to say ugly words you should not say from a pulpit. But when people use the Lord's name in vain, um, because it flies against everything that's precious to us. And uh, when the Bible says, is the hope of the nations is in his name. And it says it's in that name that he gave him that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, both in heaven and earth, that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's not a swear word. It's the name that holds together all the hope of mankind. And one day, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is the Christ and the Lord from every nation, tongue, and tribe. Well, having completed the task on the cross of securing the path of salvation, Jesus then turns, aha, uh -huh, are you getting with me? To you and me, his disciples, his followers, his children, his people. And now he gives us a call to the nations. Mm -hmm. So the father starts out, he claims the nations, the son comes, he secures the nations, and now it's our turn. Now I want to say all of us as believers, as I've said previously, all of us, absolutely all of us, are mandated and called to reach the nations. It is not the task of the missions department in a church. Don't look at me like that. We've got to rescue evangelism and missions out of the hands of the few and make it the life task of all. Do you like to hear that sentence again? We have to rescue the mission of evangelism and missions work out of the hands of the few and make it the lifestyle of all Christians. Gee, I was hoping that there would be some excitement on that score. But maybe it intimidates you, but let me tell you, we've got a world mission. And we need to rise up inside to that call and say, yes, Lord, today I understand I am called to the nations. And don't worry, we're not expecting you to go out here and book your ticket somewhere. I would like to just remind you by two scriptures that this is truthful and scriptural, what I've just said. We find the first reference to this call in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. It's called the Great Commission. And just these words that Jesus started out with as he was looking at a ragtag group of ordinary people. They weren't Bible school students. They were just ordinary people. And he said this to them. After he was raised from the dead, he's now ready to ascend to heaven. And he says to them, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. All nations. Goes on to say, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey and to, uh, to do everything I've commanded you. And, and, and listen to this last sentence. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I just want to say to you this morning something that Pastor Joe just reminded me of before the sermon. That God's promise to be with us validates that that call is still effective today because God doesn't stop being with us. He's with us now. But I want you to understand that there's a dimension of God's presence 
that will only ever be experienced and felt by those who devote themselves to His cause. Because His cause, his cause is propped up and supported by His presence. This may sound rough to you, but I want to tell you, there is a personal place where you experience and enjoy His presence. It's a privilege. It's the most wonderful thing there is. But it's never to stop there. His presence is for His purpose. And His purpose is that the nations of the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord and loves them. Have you got that? And God says, it's through my empowering presence in your life that I will do that. Through the presence of my Holy Spirit with you, I will make sure that you will be able to reach the nations of the world. So it would be legitimate to say that there's a dimension of God's power and presence that is exclusively reserved for those who are stepping out in obedience to fulfill His commission, which is to reach the nations. Isn't that a wonderful prospect to know there's something of God's presence that I will experience the day I step out and make myself available to reach the nations? I trust that it will stir a longing in your heart to say, I want more of God. You know, sometimes when I hear Christians say, oh, we want more of God. 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 I want to say, just go on outreach. Just go and do something for Him. Just go and reach the world and the nations beyond you, and you will experience more of His presence because something of His presence and power is reserved in a special way for those who comply to His assignment to go to the nations of the world. And then comes the great day in the book of Acts, my second scripture that confirms our call and pointing to the nations and Jesus says this, He says, go and wait in Jerusalem now. I'm, I'm going up to my Father, but now your great task starts to reach the nations. But I will give you my power first. And it goes like this. It says in Acts 1 verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, dunamis, dynamite, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Remember, I made the difference between being the difference, being a witness and witnessing. This is God saying, my power will cause you in your life to make a difference for good. And he says, and this is where the nation's part come in. You will start in Jerusalem, your home, your heart, your, your community. And then all Judea, that's your, the town and the area around you. And, and then Samaria. And then he says, and to the ends of the earth. Guess what you find in the ends of the earth? Not a black hole you find the nations of the world. And that's where God is going with us and has been going over the years past through the people of this church. I want to come to a very important part and draw this message to a close. I want to speak about nations near and far. It is one of the advantages of our modern world that if you want to actually reach nations, it no longer necessarily requires an extended trip. You know, some years back, if you wanted to reach another nation, you probably had to get on a ship or a boat somewhere, and it took you a few months to reach your destination. But today, it's changed. All you really have to do to reach the nations is step out of your door. Come on. The nations have come to us. As travel has become easier and more effective and as globalization continues, the nations are everywhere. They're not only far away. <laughs> I just thought about something humorous. So humor me for a moment. Stick with me. And this is on the account of Trevor Noah. South African comedian. So do not write me a letter to say, Pastor, have you got a problem with Indian people? No, I don't. <laughs> but Trevor Noah says this. He says, in one of his shows, he says, KwaZulu Natal is referred to as the kingdom of the Zulus. He says, but actually, Durban is home to the largest Indian population outside of India. <laughs> it should rather be called maybe the kingdom of the Indian people outside of India. 
That's Trevor Noah for you. But it's interesting even in other nations, we, we see this incredible mixture and movement of the nations. You know, in the UK, United Kingdom, um, the most favored dish is no longer pot roast and Yorkshire pudding, but curry and rice. That's a fact. I'm not joking. It's because the nations are not in limited boundaries anymore. The nations are everywhere. I'm talking to you about the nations near and far. We need to reach the nations far away, and there are wonderful people that go and, and offer their lives for that. But none of us have any excuse that, no, you know, I can't reach the nations. You know, I, I'm only going to be, be here. Well, the nations are here. They're here. They, they're everywhere. Nations don't stay within confinements and boundaries anymore. To finally prove this, I want to do something quickly. If you are not a South African citizen, okay, not a South African citizen, but you come from the rest of the continent of Africa, please stand. And don't worry, we're not going to check your papers today. <laughs> if you are from the continent of Africa, stand. And stay, don't be quick now, stand for a moment. I want the rest of us to look. Can you see the nations in this place? Don't sit down, just hang on, just hang on. I want to do something with you. Can I ask, as I point kind of, wait for your turn as I go slowly like this, call out your nation's name. It's like, Uganda! Don't say Uganda! Because we won't hear. I want you to call it out. There's lots of people that must hear you. So from the front, call out your nation. Go, go, don't stop. Ghana. Fantastic. You may be seated. Thank you. But it's, it's not over. Can I ask you, if you come from anywhere in the far east, in the east side of the globe, would you stand? If you're from any nation that comes from Asia or Russia or those kind of places, please stand. Please stand. Anyone else? Open the balcony. You've come a long way. Just please remain standing. Please shout out first. Where do you come from? Korea. Korea. China. Who else was there at the back? Korea. India. Oh, wait, wait. Fantastic. Please be seated. Anybody here, anybody here from, from Europe? We know where you come from, Gerben. Yeah, he comes from Norway. Holland. UK, Italy, Germany, okay. Spain, thank you. <laughs> all right, sit down. All right, all right. How about, how about anybody from the Americas, North and South, North or South America, please stand. Where are you from? Canada, thank you. America. Brazil. We don't want to hear about your soccer. No. <laughs> Chile. Not the type you eat. And where are you from, man? Kansas, USA. Listen, when you've looked at all of this, don't you agree with me? They yeah, The nations are on our doorstep. It's amazing. And that's just in one gathering. The moment you go out of your door 
Out of this place, you will find the nations of the world on your doorstep. May I encourage you? I know sometimes there's friction between nations and tribes and peoples. But let us not allow ourselves to fall victim to that. Let us not first have the question, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, we Listen, we live in South Africa. We've had ugly things happen in this very nation. Let us rather be in a place where we say, God has sent you to my doorstep that I can bless you and give you the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know that the slogan of this church was based on that assignment from God to touch the nations? The slogan of this church is, Jesus Christ, hope for all. And you can add nations, peoples, whatever. And it was born from our desire as a church to obey God's call to make a difference in the nations of the world. As Scripture states that all nations will put their hope in His name. Whether they know it or not, but in their hearts, there's something that hope for a better life. And it's not accomplished by better medical care, just or a pension, or a salary, or a job. That's all temporary. But finally, the hope for a better life is found only and exclusively in Jesus Christ. And you and I are living carriers of that hope. And it's through that hope that we make a difference in the nations. So... I wonder if you will become excited with God and me, of course, today again that you can make a difference. And your difference is through the message of Jesus Christ and the hope that it brings and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. But your hope can also start and your difference by giving to faith promise. And this is not a sales pitch. This is hard selling. Because you see, we, we, we must say what we believe. And I will be presenting to you just a short overview in a moment again of our, our faith promise. And encourage you to see it as one of the greatest means by which we make a difference. Not can, we are already. And that we can present Jesus and the hope that He gives through people like you and me. And please, will you help to fulfill the prophetic word that all nations will come and bow before the Father and worship Him. Two more scriptures and I'm done and I'm going to ask you to turn back to focus on faith promise. In Psalm 22 verse 27 and 28 it says this, All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations will bow down before Him for dominion belongs to the Lord and He rules over the nations. What a scripture. What a scripture. And finally, back to Revelation as it concludes God's word. And it says in Revelation 15 verse 4, Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. Amazing word. Folks, with the support of Faith Promise, the Atfield Christian Church is already involved directly and indirectly in some 27 nations of the world. I think that's amazing. And we're asking that you will continue to support Faith Promise so that we can continue to realize God's desire to touch the nations with the good news of Jesus. And that all nations will have the opportunity to know Jesus Christ and the hope that He gives. That's what we're asking for. And you can make a difference. Make a difference by giving to Faith Promise. Yes, we want your time and your expertise, but yes, we also need your finance. Now, I want to say something to you at the beginning of this little presentation on Faith Promise. Just to say to you that real wealth, real wealth, is not measured by the balance in your bank account or your house or your car or things like that. But real wealth is created by giving and it's shown by how many lives you could help to change eternally. Don't die as the richest person in the cemetery. You're still dead. <laughs> Rather live to give. 
And it would be one of the most wonderful things when you die and you've given whatever you could give to make a difference eternally. I'm not talking about just being a philanthropist and a humanist and being nice-nice. But I'm talking about giving what can truly save people. That's what we're talking about. So a few words about faith promise. Please, in your magazines, I'll shortly ask you to take your faith promise card out. But I would like to just give you a quick overview in the next few minutes. Faith promise is a mobilizational and financial action plan for the advancing of God's kingdom. And all people in the Hatfield Christian Church family young and old, are called and challenged to make a difference for God in this world. And you've just heard, your world starts when you step outside of your door. I want to state categorically that this is a nation infiltration church. It's what we do. It's what we live for. And faith promise echoes God's call for His people to rise up and be mobilized to take new territory for His kingdom and to make a difference by being different. Faith Promise is your opportunity, folks, and mine, to take part in making an extraordinary and eternal difference in people's lives. It offers you the opportunity to actively take part in doing God's will and to take a first step of obedience to make Jesus known as the hope of this world. I thought to give you a few facts about Faith Promise. They will appear on the screen, just quick and easy. Firstly, some facts about Faith Promise, it's more than just gathering much needed funds. Faith Promise offers opportunity to be involved in difference making actions, what I call it. And that's through participation in outreaches and ministries on local, national, and international level. The second fact about Faith Promise I want you to hear is th that it's been operating for more than 30, yes, you heard right, three zero years. Faith Promise, thirdly, has an outstanding track record and credibility. It's never been uh, misused, never been taken off course. Nobody's ever bought a new Mercedes out of your funds. Do you get that? Never. It's got an outstanding track record and credibility. It's guided by a simple motto. What comes in must go out. And it goes out to fulfill God's purpose. And in that, I can assure you that faith promise is managed with excellence and transparency. The fourth thing I want you to know is that it has impacted over the years and changed hundreds of thousands of lives of late excessing of 200,000 lives per year, really deeply touched. Can you just pause for a moment? Year by year, hundreds of thousands. I think that's awesome. Something to rejoice at. Next thing I want you to know about Faith Promise is that it will grow your faith. That's why it's called Faith Promise. As you step out and promise God to give something and, and you trust Him for it, it also releases God's favor on your life. That's what I found. And it's, it's done something in my own life that I won't exchange for the world. It's brought a confidence to my faith. Can I tell you, in all the years I've been participating in Faith Promise, God has never defaulted to provide what I've set my faith out for to believe. I've never had to come back and say, sorry, Hatfield Christian Church, I, I missed my Faith Promise by 50 bucks because, you know, I did. Never. Never. And I've done this for years. I find that God's favor is released through participation in faith promise for the simple principle that God honors faith. Faith is honored by God. And last but not the least, I want to say that faith promise income for this year, what you've promised, has already exceeded the previous year's income. We are over 6 million rand. It's awesome, 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 awesome. Well done and thank you. And at the same time, I would like to encourage you, see it through. Up until the end of this month, you've got to finalize your final giving for this year of Faith Promise activity. 
And I trust with you, I really pray with you, I stand with you, that you'll be able to give in the next week or two, or even today, what you have promised to faith promise this past year. And let's trust that we will see it all come in. I believe we are heading for a breakthrough statement of faith by unprecedented giving from this church. And it's an amazing thing to see. Put your attention on the screens. I'm going to do one last overview. Where is your giving going? Your giving enables life-changing actions and going for the gospel to take place in the following areas. Three big areas. Nations, country, community. In the nations, it goes to funding mission actions to reach 27 nations. I just want to allude to the starting of the school in the DRC. A few years ago, from this church, and with your help, we launched with Pastor Willie Chipamba, who's the network leader in the DRC, in a town and area called Kananga, a Christian school. And they have excelled. Well done, Pastor Willie. I want to say to you that after about the first year, we didn't need to support them again. They continued to grow from like 30, 60, 90. And the next thing we heard, they had over 500 children. And they have gripped the attention of the officials of that nation. That's saying, come please open schools anywhere. It's an amazing thing. Plus they have money in the bank to buy their own ground for the school now. And we would love to see them help. And that, that goes on. Just to say to you also, in Cameroon we assisted to help to begin small business developments. And over this last while it's grown from six such micro enterprises to 44. And each one of those little businesses provide for families and people. So thank you, Genesis and Cameroon, that we could partner with you. And well done to see that happen. It's awesome. Of course, also, the nations that are listed there, out of those, we are training and equipping leaders. That's part of what we do with the money. It costs, costs money. And also, outreaches took place to 13 of these nations that you see listed there. But put your focus on the country. What are you giving to? What are, what are we hoping to do and what have we done? Well, a lot of support goes to TCN, the Christian Network, which is the network of churches that we are part of, but what we also serve. And they count or they number 218 churches in this network. And we help to, help, uh, we help to develop them and grow them and strengthen them through our partnership that they can reach their communities and make a difference. Awesome churches in this country. Where does your money go? Well, maybe it's God's money eventually. But also goes to the spreading of the gospel through media. And I'm extremely excited to say to you that it's not only our services on YouTube now that goes worldwide, but also that we've reached in our first 13 episodes on average over half a million people every week on a Friday morning. <laughs> huh? what? Hey folks, half a million people is a lot of people on secular television. I, I don't know what to say. Well, I can say thank you that we can put light and hope into the nation of South Africa at the rate of half a million, half a million people on average every Friday morning watches Faith Today program for five minutes, five to six in the morning. I find that amazing. You help to make it possible. It costs money because you've got to dress me and I've got to go for makeovers and Botox. <laughs> I'm just joking. No Botox. And then, of course, in the country, we, we inject a lot of time and effort and funds into training and equipping of leaders as well. And then also seven outreaches took place to different towns in South Africa. And last but not the least, in our very own community, in our city. We work alongside and with 20 ministries that we are supporting to operate as the hearts, hands, and feet of Jesus in local communities. You've heard some of the things, it's as broad as you can think, from job creation to looking after orphans and people infected with HIV and AIDS. We have three wonderful effective children's homes that's where money is going into where we develop vulnerable children to be whole and make a positive difference in this world and then of course locally in our community here our sunday services are broadcast on regional swanee television and then also from this church a lot of training is done 
to help with those ministries and volunteers that come forward to be involved. And then also outreaches took place to six of the communities around and in our greater city. I, I, I don't know how anybody can say, wow, and what does faith promise do? What is it? What do I give my money for? For this. And thousands of lives are touched and changed. So faith promise is now in front of you. And it's a challenge of your faith. Please remember faith promise is not your tithe. This is an offering. Your tithe belongs to the storehouse. Yeah. Your offering goes to make a difference out there. This is an offering that you make by faith to God. And it depends not on affordability, but it depends on your obedience to God. And so right now, with you, I would like to do two things in prayer. Before we turn our attention to the cards, I would like to call you up to a place where we all acknowledge again that we say yes to God for His call to reach the nations, be it here or far away. And that we can devote ourselves to let Jesus be made known as the hope for all people. Second to that prayer, I would like us to take a few moments and become quiet after we've prayed that first part of devotion and ask one simple thing of the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to do in terms of faith promise? What do you want me to give? And we ask you to be realistic, but we also ask you to step out by faith. Little testimony from my side. I think I must stop it now because maybe God's getting tired of this. But every year I say, Lord, I want to participate in faith promise. Please just don't ask me to give more. And then guess what he does? He says, Francois, you've achieved this by your faith. If I leave you here, you will stagnate. Faith is alive. So I'm going to challenge you to believe me for less. No, for more. Now, so I'm officially announcing I'm going to stop praying that prayer. I'm just going to say, Lord, what do you want me to give? Yes, Lord. <laughs> and do it. Because he's never failed me. And he wants my faith to continue growing. He says to me, Francois, do you want me to not encourage your faith to grow? Do you want to have your faith stop growing? I said, no, 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 Lord, I want my faith to grow. He said, well, then step out. So we'll be asking God to speak to us as we become quiet for a while. And then my word of encouragement to you always is the following. Whatever he says to you, pray about it. No! Whatever he says to you, discuss it with your neighbor. No! Whatever he says to you, do it! I do want to say, this is not a pressurized give, 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 give. We do this once in a year because we believe in what we do. If you do want to, you're welcome to consult with your husband or your wife. Um, if you want to go and pray about it, you are welcome. But we encourage you to step out by faith and do. And thank you to many, many thousands that have given. Also want to say to you, don't underestimate the size of your gift. Don't think that, oh, what can 10 Rand do? 10 Rand can do a lot. I want to encourage you that everybody in this place will participate in faith promise. Everybody ought to have some faith, even if it's 50 Rands of faith but believe. So let's do this together. Will you please pray with me a prayer of devotion first and foremost. Father, this morning we stand before you humbly as we acknowledge that you've used ordinary people like us to make a difference in this world. To touch thousands of people with your love, with your kindness, to show them the hope that is in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for the fruitfulness of this church. And now we come again as your people, and we devote ourselves, Lord, to you and to your cause and to your call, and say, Lord, here we are. Use us to make Jesus known as the hope for all people. That's our prayer, Lord. And now we pray, Father, that you will help us to go over to action and not be led by fear or doubt, but by faith. 
And we dare to ask you, Lord, what do you want me to give to faith promise? Speak, Lord, a amount in each one of our hearts, be it monthly or once off, but that we can partner with you. I want to give you a moment just to sit quietly. Father, we do this by faith. We do this in obedience to what you're calling us to do. So strengthen us as we act in Jesus' name. Amen. May I ask you to pick up your magazines now and to go to the middle where the card has been inserted and pull it out. One firm pull and it will be out. Don't pull off the tear-off piece just yet. Pull out the whole card. You would have found in your magazine a pen as well. And I'd like to ask you to go with me as we first fill in just some of our details. You may say, Francois, I filled this in 10 times. Yes, but sometimes your address changes or your telephone number or anything, and we ask therefore that you fill it in again. So please go to the front page where it asks for your name, surname, postal address. That's very important so that we can continue to communicate with you and give you updates and reports. And please fill in the necessary information. I want to give you the assurance that this information is treated with confidentiality. It is not used outside of the realm of faith promise at all. So please fill that first part in. Let's do that together. If you need a pen for whatever reason, wave your hand. Or if you didn't get a magazine or a card, wave your hand. The ushers and leaders are standing ready. They can help you any moment. Please make sure you enter your right postal address and the other information, your Email, it's a very important way of communication. And other details, please. And then I'd like to ask you to flip your card around and look at the other side where the details of your contribution is to go. May I ask you to please, as a first decision, consider the debit order option. It doesn't cost you more but it helps us tremendously with administration so that we don't spend unnecessary funds on administration. So if you can do, do a debit order, please. If you can't and you want to do internet, that's your second option, or you can use a credit card, or you can do it monthly by putting cash in the uh, offering here, and a special envelope would be sent to you via mail um, monthly. What you need to do is fill in your pledge amount, if it's a monthly amount, then fill that in and total it. And if it's a one-time amount, go to the cash part at the bottom and just say uh, one time and fill the amount in there. I also want to ask you to note that on the screens there will appear a number shortly that you can SMS your pledge. If you say, Franz, I really don't like filling in forms, then take up your telephone and SMS what you want to contribute to that number. Your name must be first in your SMS. And then whether it's uh, an amount of 500 or 10,000 or whatever you give, and whether it's per month, PM, or per year, PY, is what you must fill in there. And we will contact you to get further details. If you want to send something through email, if you're watching via YouTube or any other way, then you can send it to IMD imd at hatfield.co.za. Just start your email off by saying faith promise and the amount that you want to give. And again, we will contact you from the office. I'd like to ask you to make sure on your card that you filled in all the details, exercised your right dis decision, debit card, internet, banking, credit card, 
or cash and check, and that you make sure you've indicated all the necessaries. If you don't have your account number, don't fret, don't worry. We will contact you providing that you've given us your telephone numbers, and we will get the further detail to you. But put the pledge in anyway. We will contact you, even if you don't have all your particulars. I pray God's grace on you as you are taking this tremendous step of faith. If you have finished your card, please tear off the end part. It's perforated. And you keep the small part, again, as we always do, to say, to encourage you and remind you to pray for faith promise and to keep on giving month by month. And you keep that part. And before we send a little basket or a holder down your row, I would like us to pray over our cards before we close the service. So may I ask you if you've completed your card, please hold it up with me. Are you ready that we can pray? Father, this is our faith promise. We trust you to make it possible by your blessing on our lives and your provision that we will be able to make this promise good. And Lord, I pray that you will stir our faith and grow our faith and that you will encourage us on this road of faith and let your favor be upon us as we believe, month by month, to make this promise good. And Lord, we dedicate this to you for your kingdom to be advanced, for territory to be taken, for a difference to be made in all the nations of the world, in our own country and in our own community. And we bless you, Lord, and we love you, and we give this because we owe our lives to you. We can never outgive you. So we dedicate this to you, Father, by faith. And all God's people say, Amen. Now at the end of your rows, there's a plastic container. Please send it down the row and pop your card into it. You can fold the card in half if you want to. Put it in that little plastic container. And... Make sure if you're not finished, you can always go and hand it in at the information desk on your way out. They will also be able to receive it from you. I'm going to close the service in a moment's time, so don't rush out until folks have sent the baskets, please. I thank you for your patience and for your participation today. Our young people are running up and down the roads to collect those plastic containers. If you can make sure that they take it from you, please. I think we got it right. I want to speak God's blessing upon you and release you to enjoy your Sunday. Father, thank you for this amazing family and that we can be fruitful in your hand. I bless them today, Father, and I pray that you be with them as you promised, with each one of them, to be a difference in this world and amongst the nations of the world. I bless you with the peace and the presence of the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and see you next week.